uh, you know, a very big lobe of sensitivity. I do that every video. I bump the microphones from video. What's happening, boot junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. And I got a couple of new precious things in the well i got one new precious thing in the booth today so we're gonna we're gonna uh do another mic test uh one of the ones uh mics that i get asked about a lot during uh, in the comments and stuff and people sending me emails and messages over youtube is could you talk about the road nt 1a and i finally got my mitts on one now the road nt 1a is an extremely extremely popular microphone and by all accounts it's a great microphone i know that there are lots of voice actors um, audiobook readers and so forth where this is you know their their mainstay mic they really like the way this mic sounds i'm gonna put my cans on that's so why i can hear i can hear these mics check one check two. Oh, good i've got microphones okay so let's just compare. So what we're going to do in this particular video is we're going to compare the Rode NT1A Anniversary Edition to the CAD E100S. These are two microphones that get a lot of play in voiceover. They get a lot of, uh, a lot of people interested in them in voiceover. Now there's a slightly different, pretty big different, price point between these two microphones. The NT1A, I checked on Amazon today, and I think it was running $229 for the kit. And that includes uh, the pop filter, comes with a pop filter, replete with advertisement. So you certainly get ad you get advertised to, and everybody gets to see advertisement. I hate that. I hate advertising like that. Um, but you get, uh, a, you get an included pop screen. And what's cool about the pop screen, you see it's got this short... Um, the short little thing, this actually is integrated into the shock mount. Now that's really cool. That's actually very handy. I don't have it in here, uh, in here, so one, so it would block my face. Uh, but it, it is part of the shock mount. Makes for a very substantial shock mount. And I'll put some B-roll footage in here so that you can see it. Uh, and we're going to compare this to the CAD E100S. And you've seen me use the CAD E100S in a lot of different videos. Really, I'm, I'm a big fan of this microphone. Um, and, but the microphone, the CAD E100S, I looked on Amazon today, and its price point was like four twenty two, dollars a little bit more expensive than I've seen it before with Amazon's uh, price fluctuations. Typically, three ninety nine dollars is where I see this one new. So we see these a lot in voiceover. Lots of uh, lots of home studios people use them. Uh, they are slightly they're different types of microphones. They're both large diaphragm condensers. The diaphragm on the NT1A is a little bit bigger than the uh, the E100. Just visually, this one seems to be about an inch. This one seems to be about three quarters of an inch. I'm not sure if that makes that big a difference. It's mostly in you know how it what the response is uh, but they are different sizes the um they're uh different patterns so the cad e100s is a super cardioid pattern and i personally i like the super cardioid pattern for home studio use especially if you're not in a booth like this because it does have greater what they call greater off-axis rejection so sounds from the side as you move off to the side the uh the vo your voice and uh, will fall off very quickly it's got a it's got a much narrower sort of sweet spot where you need to put your voice for the mic to pick it up which means if there's noise that comes in from the side your computer fan street noise it's less likely to be heard it's not going to be eliminated it's just going to be less less prominent in the microphone Whereas the NT1A is a cardioid pattern. So if the super cardioid has a pattern that comes out like this, the car super cardioids I saw also have a, a slight pattern of sensitivity right directly behind it, different than a cardioid. A cardioid has, cardioid, you see me do this little heart-shaped thing, so it's got this heart-shaped pattern to it, but it goes out and around, and it goes back to the sides. So it's really not sensitive directly from the back, but the sides, as I move off to the side, you'll hear that this microphone still can pick me up pretty well. So they do sound 
they do sound different. Now, in my re, my sort of pre-listening to these uh, two different microphones, they do to me they sound different. It's always subtle when you start to get up into these into these good, you know, good sturdy mid-range microphones. Uh, there, it's mostly coming down to not whether or not one works or not, but whether it comes down to being flattering for your particular voice. So, what I hear when I've listened to two these two different mics is the the road uh the NT1A to me sounds brighter crisper it's got more high end more treble more treble sensitivity in that microphone and i think that's something that this microphone's known for it's known for being really bright really crisp it's a good hot mic it's got plenty of gain it's a very quiet mic i would say that this mic is quieter than this one even though they're not advertised as, even though this one is advertised as being quieter, the E100S is being advertised as being quieter than the one, the uh, 1A. In these two, this one's quieter. My uh, E100S definitely has a has a higher self noise. I still think it's defective, but they say it's not. But I think this one has a higher self noise than this one. As I listen to it back, and we'll do a little se- moment of silence, and we'll hear how the difference is between them. Where was I? lost my place. Uh, cardioid pattern, self noise, got plenty of gain. Um, I like the way the sounds it's got it, but it's got more treble. And I feel like I have to get really up on this mic in order to, for it to grab some of the bass out of my voice, some of that proximity effect. I have to really be up on it. Whereas I feel like the E100S has a warmer tone. Uh, it's not quite as warm as the, the vintage version of the E100. Uh, I think that one's even warmer less treble, uh, for better or for worse. I have a reasonably deep voice, so I like the way that, uh, that smooths out the, the lower register of my voice. I like the way it smooths out, uh, and doesn't make quite, uh, I, I feel like this, this microphone is a bit harsher on my voice than this one. It's just different in the way they sound. It's not better or worse. It's just what's appropriate for your particular sound. <laughs> It, that's why it's really hard to say better, worse, worse, better, better. You know, w- which one it's really going to come down to if the mic works, does it sound right for your voice? Now, there'll be other mics that we're going to check in, in other videos. And sometimes you go, it just doesn't sound good on anybody's voice. And that can be true. But I don't think that's true for the differences between the these two microphones. Um, I really do feel it comes down to personal preference, budget, and uh, you know, use for it. Um, I do find that both of these mics, they're extremely sensitive, uh, so they're going to work really well for... Uh, Radio imaging, uh, you know, broadcast advertisements. If you've got a sufficiently quiet recording studio, you could certainly record broadcast quality on either of these. Um, audiobooks, they could certainly work for audiobooks. You would definitely need to have the pop filter for both of them. Uh, they both would work for a variety of different uh, situations. Where I think, where I think the NT1 is less appropriate is if you're um, a gamer or a streamer and you wanted to have the NT and you wanted to have a microphone that was going to sit near your keyboard or was going to be part of your computer set- setup. Uh, what I have found is, and this is broadly about cardioid large diaphragm condensers, is they're all very, very sensitive. And this will have uh, you know, a very big lobe of sensitivity. I do that every video. I bumped the microphones from video. This one's going to have a large lobe of sensitivity around it, which means even behind it, it's going to hear your keyboard clicking away. It's going to hear your mouse scraping across the, the, the table. It's going to hear everything. And, if, and it's going to end up in your frame, right? Because these microphones are meant to be used like this far away. As you get, as you get back here, they fall off and they're going to they're going to hear your room really brightly. Uh, they're going to hear, you know, all the r- reverb and everything like that and the cardioid is only going to be is only going to pick up more of that compared to the super cardioid. The the, the regular cardioid is going to pick up more of that room ambiance. 
that you may not find desirable. So if you're like a streamer and you're streaming out of a, a room in your house that doesn't have good acoustic treatment, the, the NT1A is just going to exaggerate that more. Got to keep it really close. That way the gain doesn't have to be quite so high. The closer you are to it, the, the more it's going to reject that, that outside noise because you can keep the gain a little bit lower. It's not that it won't be there. It just won't be as loud relative to how voice, how close your voice is and how loud your voice is when you're right up on that microphone. But having that microphone and that pop filter in front of it, that gets in the way of your screen, right? So all of a sudden, you got you got to work to get all of these things so that you can see it. That's why I don't, I don't love pop filters. They just get in the way of copy. I always prefer to have... Even though you get the, the tiniest reduction in sound quality, having these foam windscreens, I like them if you can get them. So those are the, those are the, the two big differences. Um, Specification-wise, they're both, they're both really similar. They're both really similar mics. They're, uh, uh, I don't know, what is there to say about them? It's going to boil down to, at this price point, it's going to boil down to, which one do you think sounds better? You listen to it from, from my voice and you listen to it and you say, Does, how would that translate to me? It's really hard for me to say, here's how it's going to translate for you. I will say that I do think that uh, this one, the, the E100S, for me sounds better for my bassier voice. I feel like this one uh, doesn't flatter the bass in my voice quite as well. And it's it's a little bit high for me. It's a, it's a little bit crisp. I feel like my voice needs to be a little bit warmer. And so I personally prefer the E100S, but that, I'm not saying that this is a bad mic at all. The NT1A, great mic. You can hear it should sound great. And you'll hear it's much quieter than this one. No noise here. Let's do a, let's do a, let's do a silence test. I'll hold my breath and we'll do 10 or 15 seconds of each. So first, let's listen to the NT1A. Pretty quiet, right? Now, let's listen to the E100S. You can hear that, right? You can hear that underlying hiss. Now it's manageable, uh, and if you're right up on that mic, it's gonna you're gonna drown that hiss out. But in between words, it's you know you're gonna have to manage it with a gate. You're gonna have to manage it with a dialogue denoiser or something if you really want it to be pristine and silent. Frustrating about this mic. It's frustrating about the E100S, especially at its price point. I think the noise floor is too high, but I'm willing to overlook it because I like the way I sound on it. And I'll take that little extra processing. It's a bummer. So there you have it. Uh, these two microphones, I hope that I've given you enough back and forth so that you can hear these two microphones, compare and contrast, and see which one you like better. Really, at this, at this rate, it's, it's personal choice, not better or worse. Noise floor, notwithstanding for the E100S. Uh, but that's it. So now, go choose a large diaphragm condenser mic Go get in your booth and record something amazing. I forgot to add, um, I was recently interviewed for another YouTuber's channel, Joe Murphy, uh, and he did a really great uh, interview, a really enjoyable interview with him uh, talking about sort of how I got started in voiceover, some of the things to think about when you're setting up a home studio. So uh, you fo go watch uh, my interview over there and subscribe to Joe. Give him a little love. Uh, he does really good interviews with uh, voice artists, uh, and he's, you know, he's getting started. So uh, go over there and give uh, Joe a little love, and I'll link to his video down in the comments. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm going to try and remember to say, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click that little bell if you want to get notified whenever I do one of these, do one of these videos. And uh, we'll talk to you again next time.